So guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my five tool rule, or essentially my five pieces of kit that if I had to choose just five pieces to do most of the bushcrafting and life skills, this would be it. Now I do want to quickly specify before we go into what this one is, there will be two setups and I want to specify just what a tool is. And essentially, at least for me, a tool is something that is highly useful and not very easily replicable. And what I mean by that is something like this gun here. The gun simplifies hunting a lot, but you are not really going to be able to make a gun out here in the woods. The same rules apply with an axe. An axe is insanely useful and almost crucial, especially up here in this climate. Uh, but you're not really going to be able to make an axe. You're not going to really be able to make knives very easily. You might be able to make them semi-easily or out of stone or bone or uh, some kind of flint, you know, obsidian, something like that. But they're never going to reach the quality levels of these. And simply put, they're just going to be very hard to replicate. Whereas something like firecraft, you know, um, fire is pretty easy to make. You know, you can make bow drills pretty easily. Same with things like shelter. You know, you don't need a tarp for shelter. And while it would make it faster to get shelter if you brought something like a tarp, uh, it would certainly not be necessary. You can make a shelter out here pretty easily. Same with fire. You know, you can make a bow drill set pretty easily out here, especially if you know what you're doing. So that, as well as backpacks, you know, those won't really be counted. And this isn't necessarily disqualifying or saying that you don't need those. I'm just saying that those aren't necessarily tools. So this might be assumed that you already have something like a ferro rod, a backpack, you know, a tent or tarp for you to stay in. These are specifically the tools of the trade. And these are the things that will allow you to make the crafts, build shelters, build fires, for your needs. So that's primarily what the tool is when we're going over the five tool rule for this. So today we're gonna to be looking at my five tools, like I said, and I'm gonna be doing another set, as I also said, and just going over what these different tools are and why I chose them. So let's get started. So jumping right into this, I'm gonna be going over the most important thing first, and it's not this but it is actually a solid belt knife. So for this protect particular setup, this is going from a lot more of a crafting kind of orient, and so there's gonna be a lot of craft and helpful tools for crafting, building lots of things. But the first thing, and one of the most traditional and important things to carry, is a very solid belt knife. Now this one's just the Pull Force Prepper one, as you guys have probably seen already, but this one's near 10 inches in size. It's very capable. Uh, overall belt knife for just doing heavy duty tasks such as batoning, uh, fire starting. It can be pushed into skinning and dressing game animals. Uh, it's not necessarily particularly apt to that, but it's also good at doing generalized uh, crafting. So if you need to build something like a deadfall trap, or once again, if you need to peel the bark off of a birch bark tree, this is definitely what you'll be doing it with. And once again, a very capable knife for doing that. And so that is just the general purpose solid belt knife. So the next thing going into it, and certainly very important, is the pack axe, or this general boy's sized axe. This one is around 25 and a half inches. Of course, this is a GBA Scandi Forest axe. Very capable, and once again, it complements the belt knife very well because this is essentially the next size up. So if your belt knife can't do it, this is essentially what can. And this is going to be what you're primarily mo making most of your big uh, things with. So such as shelters, I've built multiple shelters and the uh, wiki up that I've shown multiple times was actually built pretty much solely with this uh, ax. And my friend also has a GBA Scandi Forest ax. And so we both used our Scandi Forest axes primarily to build that shelter. So I already know that this axe is very capable of building larger implements. In fact, most of the shelter craft I've done in bushcrafting has been done with either my Wetterlings or this GBA, which are both around the same size. So this is carried for larger crafting tasks as well. Of course, it should go without saying, but it's also great for 
processing firewood, splitting medium-sized stuff. Once again, stuff that's just a little bit too large to baton with this. You can split with this, break it down into more uh, readily burnable chunks of wood. And so that is what this is primarily for and why it's useful. So then going into the next part or the third part, and that is a very small uh, companion knife. Now, once again, this is, so this is the Mora Eldris, and this is a knife that I quickly come to love, and it's such a handy and very small, but yet very, very capable neck knife, and that's how I'd be carrying it, is in the fashion of a neck knife, and essentially it's meant to be a small companion knife to the larger belt knife. And this is what you'll be doing most of your fine carving and skinning tasks with, is this very small, very fine tool. Once again, it's not going to be able to baton much, if anything at all, but it's really useful at carving extremely fine things. So if you need to make things like bone awls, because you won't see any awls in this kit, so if you need to make something like a bone or a wood awl or a needle or a netting needle, that's primarily what you'd be using this to do. Um, so overall, it's primarily intended to be used for the very small tasks that the larger knife just can't complete. In addition, it's also used for dressing and processing of game and food. So once again, it's not just about processing meat. A lot of times you'll be processing different vegetables, berries, you know, cutting things up to size to be put into pots or stews or whatever you're going to be using to cook. And that's where this is perfect to do those things. So that is the companion knife. And really this is a catch-all. It does a lot of work for the woodsman. And even traditionally, not necessarily just neck knives, but traditionally the very small pocket knives or these very small neck knives were the real workhorse to the woodsman setup. And that's because they're just so versatile and they really have thousands of uses. So the next one is a little bit more specific, but once again it goes back to the overall element of crafting. This here is a wrapped in a possum, but is my Mora hook knife. And this, once again, is going for crafting and, or is primarily used for crafting and making things like small bowls or spoons, the different things that you might need to use. Uh, this for. This actually also has a lot of uses. I've actually began to use this more and more uh, when carving radiuses. So especially on things like spoons, when the handle tapers down, there's a radius that it, you know, the spoon head kind of like becomes larger, but it tapers down into a handle. And that radius I found is really super easy to carve and get really good bites of wood with a hook knife. So they're not just for making, you know, like round divots in a piece of wood. They can actually be used as well for carving radiuses. And you'll find that they're a lot better at carving radiuses than a standard straight blade. So that is why I carry this. And why it's a very important tool for the modern wood is the hook knife. So the next part and the last part, and this is something that actually a lot of people don't like to carry or show in like minimalistic or five, like a five tool rule kind of setup. And in fairness, you can make hunting implements out in the woods. You can make, uh, you know, primitive bows and very basic hunting implements. But in all honesty, having used those, like I've tried to use them and yes, you can definitely hunt with them. And I've had some success with different types of hunting implements that you can make out in the woods, especially traps, but nothing beats a gun. When it comes down to it, a gun is still the best way to hunt. I mean, there's a reason why guns are used in such popularity with hunters nowadays. Yes, we have access to bows, muzzle loaders, you know, many different types of, you know, cool, awesome hunting methods, slingshots, but at the end of the day, nothing beats a gun. Guns are simple and highly effective, and so that's why this is thrown in here, is because, like I said, guns are simple and very, very effective at getting game animals. And getting game animals, while you may not directly see the crafting importance of this gun, this gun actually does have some importance to crafting in the fact that if you can easily and readily get game animals like squirrels, hares, and different things, you can get their pelts or their hides. And that allows you to make things like this kind of sheet here, or will allow you to make different things for you to wear or utilize different pouches, 
um, for bushcrafting. And so while this may not have the immediate showing of you know crafting, it's the ready access that this allows you to have to get animals and get their hides is something that's actually really important to um, crafting. Because like I said, leather is very, very good for crafting, especially making things like pouches or gear to hold your gear in. So that has been a look at my first setup, and once again, this is a more crafting oriented uh, setup here, five tool rule. This is more as well traditional of what normal woodsmen of even past times would carry. But now we're gonna move into a little bit more of a modern setup and show you guys what my more modern uh, five tool rule setup would be. So this is the more modern setup, and this one certainly changed up a little bit. Of course, some of the bases, like the rifle, are still the same. But once again, those are really the best tool, you know, for hunting, and there's really not going to be any changes to that. And of course, this is just a stand-in, just for a rifle. You could replace this with anything like a semi-act, semi-auto, bolt action. You know, this is just a stand-in for a lever or not lever, but just a 22 or you know a rifle in general. So now let's get into this. So going into the first thing and probably the most important thing, and this is essentially the workaround for all of this kit, you know everything works off of it, is the large knife. Now this is more of a do-all and once again this actually is replacing, essentially condensing two tools into one and that's why there's a little bit of a switch up here. But essentially this is the axe and the large belt knife and it takes most of the things that both of those did and does them. So this of course is the Topps Tahoma Field Knife and I've been experimenting a little bit more around with this type of five tool rule and that's kind of why I'm bringing it up is because this is a little bit more where I'm going right now and you know I'm just kind of playing with it and seeing how larger knives work. Um, but that, that's essentially this tool replaces the belt knife and the axe in all in one. And so this is pretty much a do-all. It can do a lot of different tasks, of course, most of what the belt knife could do, except for dressing game animals. Essentially, this is no longer very applicable for it. I mean, you can, like if you choke up on it, and you know, like do some fancy techniques, you can still dress game animals with this, especially things like deer or larger game animals. But for the most part, it's not really gonna be able to do that. But it can also do chopping. And of course, because of its blade length, you know, its actual batonable blade length is like from here to here you can actually baton very large pieces of wood with this and <clears throat> do quite well and so or, and replace the axe quite well with the whole batoning now of course this won't be as efficient as an axe and i know a lot of people will argue like oh axes are still king but i'm just playing around with this idea and seeing how it goes so far it is actually working quite well and once again i am continually impressed at the capabilities of a large knife that's very well thought out, very well designed, like this Tahoma is. So the next tool, and of course, as I already mentioned with the kind of flaws of a chopper or a big kind of machete sized knife, is that it really can't dress game animals, and obviously, I mean, we can't kid ourselves, you know, this knife is not going to be as good for crafting, and once again, this setup isn't as geared toward crafting as the prior one was, but it can't really do too much crafting, especially very fine things. So obviously something very small like this other more Eldris is very handy. And once again, as I mentioned in the first uh, time that I brought the more Eldris out, this is really just a catch-all blade of doing pretty much most of the small game skinning, gutting, and dressing process. It's also going to be the primary knife you'll be using for crafting and doing a lot of very fine tasks. And this is the bigger thing about a lot of people, you know, they don't fully understand or they don't even really see it in themselves that with most of the crafting we do, we really don't need a belt knife like that because this is what's doing most of the crafting. I mean, personally, at least for myself, this is the first thing I grab when I want to make different crafts and especially very fine and intricate work. I don't even grab a, you know, like nine inch blade or something like the previous belt knife showing. I just don't really grab those knives because once again, they're big, they're not as agile and fine working as this more Eldress. So 
you know, this is primarily already what's doing most of the crafting work. And that's one of the primary reasons why I swapped over to a bigger knife is because I just really don't need, you know, to have that belt knife for doing things. This knife will really do it all. So then the next part for crafting in particular is a multi-tool. And once again, switching it up and going more, you know, new agey. And so this, you know, will replace and do a lot of work that the other knives will do um, crafting and doing different craft works. Of course, this knife has a blade on it. It's probably not going to be as good as that one's blade, but primarily what I like about it is that it has a whole bunch of different things, such as an awl and other crafting implements that do make it quite useful for crafting. Now, I do want to note something, because it seems like there's a lot of people, especially in the bushcraft realm, that really love like steel awls and they just love awls like they really love awls and the problem is with my whole thought at least for me and the reason why I don't really love awls I mean I'll take a steel awl when I can get one but I'm not really particularly motivated to go get a steel awl like or incorporate it into my uh, gear it's just for the fact that it's quite easy to make a hardwood or bone awl and really that's when uh, native people even native americans once they had things like steel tomahawks still continued to make and use bone awls and that's because they're very effective you can get a bone awl very very sharp and they work very well so that's probably what i would in most cases end up doing anyways but there are a lot of people who love steel awls i'm just saying that it's not a particular thing that i would try to incorporate into every one of my kits if once again if i can get one like with this multi-tool then i'll definitely take it because it's a lot better to have it all pre-made than have to go make one yourself but just keep in mind that they aren't a huge deal and they're pretty easy to make uh, same with sewing needles. They're, they've been around for millennia and they are very effective, made out of bone and wood. So the next piece that I've been fondling here while I'm talking about awls and how unimportant they are is a saw. And once again, moving into more of a new kind of new agey setup, this is a saw. And of course, this is the silky big boy. Of, I do have a um, buck saw like a breakdown buck saw and that is really great and it's arguable which one in the long run is better i mean that one you know you can replace the handles and stuff like that and you could technically if you had that saw blade you could actually like i said just take that saw blade and make everything else for the buck saw out there in the woods but uh, there is a lot of convenience and a lot of awesomeness in having a folding saw and one of the big things I love about a folding saw is just the ease of use. Whereas with a buck saw, you have multiple different parts that can be lost. And you have multiple different parts that you have to take and like assemble it all together. And you have to kind of like hold it in a weird way until it tensions up correctly. So overall, it's not the easiest thing to use or set up at least. It's pretty easy to use, but uh, it's not the easiest thing to set up. And maintenance on them can kind of suck. So anyways, that's why I chose a folding saw, and the folding saw is just for the very fine crafting tasks uh, that I would have to encounter and do. And once again, I'm also carrying a larger saw because I'm giving up some sacrifices with the uh, not having an axe. So to make up for the capabilities of the axe, that's why I have a large knife and a large saw, is to help make up for the lost capabilities of the axe and this will be able to chew through wood just about as fast as an axe will and so if I need to buck a piece of wood down I'll probably use this and if I need to split a piece of wood I'll probably use this so that's where I'm kind of making up the capacity that the saw or the axe had with these two tools so anyways guys that is two looks at two different five tool rules and once again this is more of like what I'm running nowadays uh, but I still definitely love and run you know that uh, kind of older setup uh, semi frequently and of course I won't forget here gun same as always and same talking points as with the first five tool rule very easy hunting very good choice for a five tool rule in my opinion so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed that as always, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And that's all for now. I'm out.